I'm honored to have you guys in my, in my room. Um, as you can see, it's it's turned into a class from a from a classroom. Uh, I've lost a third of my room to, to keep a robotics program going throughout the year. Uh, it's a long season. It's uh, something that we start as soon as school starts. <clears throat> um, the competitions that these guys do change every year, and they release over the summer what the new competition is going to be. So as soon as school gets going, we're like, okay, what are we going to do to, to make a robot perform um, uh, what it needs to do? And uh, I asked a few kids to come in who um, are part of three teams. If we look at robotics as a whole, I started off a couple of years ago. We didn't go to any competitions. We just tried to learn how to uh, manipulate the parts. We started off with, um, I think, maybe four kids, five kids. Uh, the next year, last year, uh, we went to a couple competitions, and we did well enough where we got to go to the state competition in Rolla, and so we went to S&T and got to perform at state. We, uh, we made it to the semifinals, and we had one robot at that time, and then this year we started, and I had 15 kids, and it was phenomenal. This is the point where kids are starting to get their robot coded, they're starting to work out some final kinks. Um, but uh, one of our groups here with Owen and, and Peyton and uh, Ethan, I'll let them talk first about their robot and uh, where it's at and where it needs to be, and then we'll, we'll look at a, a couple others. So boys, what do you, what do you want to say? All right. Ooh, <laughs> so our robot is, it's able to drive when it's in the air. But as soon as it touches the ground, it just stops being able to move. I'm not, it, so if we lift it up, if we manually lift it, all the wheels spin. Yeah. And as you're doing that, I'll just say one quick thing. Um, one of the one of the things I have to think about when uh, just as far as driving is this is really tall for these robots. And in order, uh, this is a kit you can make this uh, with directions. Um, in order to get this sucker up onto here, uh, you actually have to use the, the claw to almost push against uh, the, uh, the, the mat to push it up. So, yeah, so getting up onto this yellow platform is going to be a challenge. So, the yellow platform is worth six points, which is a huge amount. Um, it, it's a big... Here, so just a, that's worth one, getting it to your collar. Getting up there is two or three. Two points. So, it's a, it's a big portion. So us not being able to do that is kind of a big hit to our points. So that's our biggest priority is our base. We built this Monday. Like yeah. We built it all Monday. So it's a, it's, it's a baby. So we have a lot of new things. Well, when they do. say that they built their base on Monday, they've gone through a number of different bases. Like our 18th base. <laughs> yeah. So our arms are pretty, our arms work pretty well. It can pick up the cap. It can move the cap inside. But as soon as I have to turn it, it's not, it's not functional. And I'm off lift. I'm off with driving it. So that's just, <laughs> that just comes with practice. practice. Yeah, it comes with practice. Um, but it's able to pick up the cap. It's able to put the cap on the post. On the post. Those are points. So. Yeah. Um, just you know, speaking about this robot in particular, um, there's so much trial and error. I know that the other day they had a small gear right here, and they figured out if we go from a small gear to a big gear, we can increase the torque and they were having a hard time picking up a, uh, a cap and getting it up to the top of one of those posts. And so, you know, you just, it's so much trial and error and it's getting there, so. 18th base. 18th base. <laughs> um, Gunner and Ethan back here. Um, the arm's definitely a work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> where, are you, what's you, where are you going with it? See, what you saw with this one is something that can flip this way um, to get it from, from color to color, what are you guys going to try and do? Yeah, we're going to start it in the middle so it's under the size requirements and flip it over the back. Okay, talk about the size requirements. So essentially, your robot has to fit within an 18 inch by 18 inch by 18 inch cube. So we can't have our arm sitting outside the robot whenever we start. But once we start, you're allowed to extend your robot however large you wish. So I guess what we're trying to go for is something that's sort of small, but then expands outward. So with our current arm, we're gonna start it off inside the base. That's why we basically built our base as a square. 
and then we're gonna lift the arm out. And when this works, it's gonna come out to be down there, but it doesn't work. So it's just sitting there. <laughs> uh, alternatively to Ethan's group over here, can drive currently, but our arm doesn't work. Uh, we actually just finished up the um, final design, getting everything attached yesterday. So coding just hasn't been, we haven't been able to get it coded and all the wiring done yet for it. Um, however, we can smoothly drive around the field uh, with pretty good turning. It looks like a wire is caught down here, so it doesn't really want to turn right now. But we have fairly smooth driving, which is... It doesn't like to do this. Yeah. <laughs> it was working like a little bit ago, so... Uh, but our main focus is our arm here, and this is the, uh, one of the big draws to ours, is this really stable arm that will eventually be able to extend and hold itself in place. Uh, and when we have our total reach, it will be over one meter, which is plenty to reach uh, those caps up there. And then as well, uh, alternatively, we also, to score points, have what the other teams haven't done yet, which is our ball shooter. So I'm gonna pass this over to you, Seth real quick while I get this set up. Uh, Seth, you can start punching up that. All right, so uh, these top flags, or whatever they are, to reach them, you have to use- uh, middle, have, middle and top. Yeah, the middle and top. You have to grab a ball somehow and launch it and hit it so it shows your color. That's how you score points. Now the thing that we have here, <clears throat> It's pretty neat. You, if you can't see it, try and. All right. So right here we have a. Um, it's basically a ball launcher. Uh, think of this thing as a crossbow. Uh, how a crossbow will pull a arrow back and then launch it forward. This is similar to that, except it uses a ball. All right. Switch it to you. All right. So. We have it coded and everything, um, so we it can move back and it can grab on to this. Uh oh, it can grab on to this ball right here. Or this set of rubber bands. This right here. You put you place the ball back. It goes all the way back, and then you sit. fling it. <laughs> um, it's not completely finished yet, but. Uh, by the time that we uh, completely finish it, it should work um, really well, and we'll be able to hit both of those flags. Yes. And I'll just say, I mean, it's high-level collaboration. As you can see, these teams are working, uh, you know, together and, and really solving a lot of problems. And Mr. Stone came last year and just said, you know, we're kind of hitting the thing, and, and he decided we just need to sign up for a competition. And I think once he did, it, it really put the pressure on the guys to, to, to meet that challenge that Mr. Stone had put it out there. And then I think they far exceeded, you know, mine and Mr. Stone's expectations. Once they got into the competition, they realized, <laughs> hey, we belong. And not only do we belong, we're, we're pretty good. And, and they saw that by qualifying for state and then doing so well at state. And so uh, it's a true credit to Mr. Stone and these young men's uh, work ethic and how much they've achieved here in the last few years. Yeah.